Hey everyone, my name is Heba and welcome back. I've got a lot of things to show you that's been my favorites for the month of June and July. And I do have a few that hasn't been my favorites. And there's some that I'm still kind of thinking about. And also I'd like to let you know some lifestyle favorites. Since I've got a lot of things to show you, let's go ahead and start with the order that I applied this look using my favorites. And let's start with eyeshadow primers. And I have two of them here, one that I do like and one that's not my favorite. Let's start with the one that I do like and it's by Fenty Beauty and it's the Pro Filter Amplifying Eye Primer. I've been in search for a different eye primer because I've been using the one by Hourglass and I do like that one. The problem with the Hourglass one is that it kind of looks ashy on my lids. So I wanted something that I can find that has a little bit of color or one that doesn't look too ashy on me. So I've tried the Fenty Beauty and even though it does have like of a pinky undertone, it doesn't look too ashy. And I do have to say that it does kind of amplifies the shadows, gives a little bit more pop of color. And the shadows do not crease on me when I use this primer. Now this primer by Laura Mercier, not my favorite. I do like the color of it though. Let me swatch them both here on my hand together. So here's the Fenty Beauty one and here's the Laura Mercier. I thought I would like this one better because I do like the color of it. Even though the Fenty Beauty is lighter, but it's more of a pinky undertone and it does kind of brighten it up a little bit too. But whenever I use this one, the shadows creased up and it didn't give the shadows that extra oomph, that extra color to it. And the most important thing, it made my shadows crease. So not my favorite, so I will not be using this one, but I do like the Fenty Beauty one. I'm seeing that Suku is making an eyeshadow primer and Guerlain is making an eyeshadow primer. I don't know when those will be out or if they're out. I just saw it on Instagram, but when those do come out, I would like to give those a try. Next is eyeshadows and I have a lot of eyeshadow palettes that I'd like to show you, but let's start with the one that I'm wearing and I have to say it's my favorite, one of my favorites. And it's by Yves Saint Laurent, the Mini Clutch Eyeshadow Palette love these. Love the formula, love the packaging, love the color stories in here. And I started out with three and now I have seven. But the one that I'm wearing right now is 300 Casbah Spices. This one is my favorite. The shades blend out very nicely. It is pigmented. You can build it up. The shades do not muddy with each other. You can see, you know, the different shades that I used. And the metallics, it's quite surprisingly pigmented. I did do a video on these and I'll link it down below. But in that video, I did a look using this palette. Really do like that one. But this one's another pretty look. My favorite. This is my favorite. YSL did come out with six new mini clutch palettes and two limited edition palettes. So I started out with three and now I have seven. I picked up three of the others that are in the permanent line and one limited edition palette. The one that I didn't pick up is the blue one. I can live without that one. But I'm really enjoying the YSL mini clutches. The formula is wonderful. And hopefully in the coming weeks I'll be doing a video with the other four palettes. Another beautiful formula are the ones by Guerlain, the Omorgi palettes. And these are from their 2020 23 fall collection. Love the color stories in these. And in this collection there are two palettes and here's one of them, 258 Wild Nudes. And the other one is 910 Undressed Brown. I also did a video using these palettes and the lipsticks that I'll show you at the end of this video. But I love the formula and I have to say that these are quite different from their previous eyeshadow releases. These are a little bit more creamier I should say. I don't know if they changed the formula but I love how they work on the lids. I love these color stories and when I went to Vegas last weekend I did take 258 Wild Nudes with me. Beautiful palette. Beautiful neutral warm kind of boring palette but the formula is great. It lasts all day just like the YSL does too. So yes another favorite from Guerlain these Ombrogi eyeshadow quads. And then I have these palettes from Sydney Grace in collaboration with Mary from Glitzy Fritzy the Blessed palettes. I have it in light and deep. Also did a video on these and I'll link that one down below. So here's the light palette and and the deep palette. But the difference between the light and the deep are five of the six matte shades. Both are beautiful, but for me and my skin tone, I prefer the deep palette. Love the color store in here. Love the meaning of the shades in here. My savior, Shy Guy, which refers to her husband. My Buttercup, which refers to Mel Thompson. Emmy After 60, which is Mary Ellen After 60. She has a YouTube channel and she's just a wonderful, wonderful woman. And that's just a few of the meanings of the name of these shades. Love the color store in these palettes. Love the meaning of these palettes. And love Mary from Glitzy Fritzy. You did good. And of course, it is the Sydney Grace formula so you can never go wrong with those palettes. 
I have to say that I did miss out of the Sydney Grace Christmas in July sale. I made a mistake. I thought there was one day or that there was one day that had 40% off palettes and I thought it was on a Thursday. So I waited till Thursday and then I looked, where's the 40%? And then I realized it just passed on Tuesday and the palettes have already sold out. So I missed out on the Christmas of July sale from Sydney Grace. Oh, well, maybe that's just God telling me something. <laughs> but I have a few more palettes to show you. And this one by Lorac, The Fairy Tale forest. One of you sent this to me and another palette and this one quite surprised with this palette. You can see the shades come from the forest especially when the sunlight shines through the leaves. Beautiful palette, beautiful color story and the shades they blend very nicely. It has that good pigmentation and it has a good variety of shades. You can make many looks with this palette. You could take this one with you to travel because it's not very heavy. It's very compact, has that plastic, or not plastic, has that cardboard packaging. The greens in here is beautiful. One look, I use this deep burgundy shade. And then the metal tone shades here, the gold, the copper, and the bronze. Beautiful, beautiful. And thank you so much for sending me this palette. The other palette that you sent me was this one by Anastasia Beverly Hills, the Nouveau palette. Love the shades in here. It's very neutral, has some warm tones too, and a cool tone shade. Now I've only used this a couple times, but I mean, it's ABH. The formula is very nice. Do love the metallics in here. And the mattes just blend out beautifully. Again, thank you so much for sending me these palettes. Wonderful palettes. Now the last palettes I'd like to show you are these by Clay de Poe, the Eye Color Quad. The formula is very nice and I just did a video on it and link it down below. But the things that are kind of holding me back is the price. These by itself cost $75 in these little plastic containers, which, you know, doesn't bother me much. But if you're going to be spending that much money, you kind of want it to, you know, look a little luxurious here. And if you wanted the compact that goes with it, you need to pay another $35. So $110 for four eyeshadows. So that's just kind of holding me back. I'd rather pay the $68 for YSL, beautiful packaging, beautiful formula, but $110 for these. To me, I just think it's too much. I mean, if you like them, you have the means for it by all means. But honestly, I do don't think these are worth $110 with the compact. I would say maybe $55, $60 without the compact, maybe, but I think it's just too much. The formula is nice. They blend it out nice. And there's another thing with the four shades in here. One of them is a cream formula and it does kind of crease up and you have to put another shade on top of it. So pretty much, I don't know, I hate to say it like this. It's kind of useless because you can't use it by itself because it will crease up. So that means you have to put one of these shades on top of it. I hope that makes sense. Again, no hate, please. I'm just voicing my opinion. There are a lot of luxury eyeshadow quads that are a lot better than these from Clay de Poe. I do love the Clay de Poe brand. Love the foundation, love the concealers, love the illuminizers, love their lipsticks. But I think they went a little too much with these eye quads. They priced it a little too much. They kind of priced out a lot of people and they did come out with 12 new color quads and I only have two and I think that's all I'm going to get for now. All right, those are the eyeshadows. Now let's go to primer and let's go with this one by Chanel. It's the Perfecting Makeup Primer Mattifying Moisturizer. So it does mattify the skin. I do have combo oily skin and this is really nice. Love the scent. Love how it just kind of blurs the imperfections that I have. And really do like this one a lot better than the one that I have from Chantecaille. And I do like the packaging of it. It's kind of sleek and I like the cap of it. It has that matte finish. Do you know that this is a matte primer? Now for concealers and I have two of them here. One's more of a corrector and the other one's a concealer. Let's start with this one by Huda Beauty and it's the Faux Filter Eye Corrector and I have it in the shade Peach. And here's what the peach looks like on my skin. And how she did this, there are five different shades of peach, if you will. There's like a pinky peach, a peachy peach, a peach peach, a deep peach. You get my drift. So again, there are five different shades and this one peach is the second, second one in or second to the lightest. And it does kind of camouflage my dark circles and some melasma spots that I have on my, my cheeks and above my lips. And the formula is nice. It's not thick, doesn't cake up. Towards the end of the day, you can see the wrinkles that I have underneath my eyes, but there's really nothing that can camouflage that. I do like this a lot that I'm 
thinking about getting her other concealer, the one that's more like your skin tone, not the corrector. And she does say you can apply it using one dot for just like a thin layer or to really conceal, you can use up to three dots. For my aging eyes, I like to use one dot. I think that's plenty for me. And the other concealer is this one by Givenchy, the Prism Libra Skin Caring Concealer. And this was in the shade N385. Really do like this one too. And I think it's a great shade for underneath my eyes. It's not too ashy, it's not too deep. And the formula is very nice, it's not thick. It blends out very nicely. And I don't know, there's just something about this bottle, or is it a tube? I don't know, there's just something about it that just feels very luxurious, I don't know. I mean, it is Givenchy, but this is a nice concealer. It doesn't crease up. I like this one so much that I'm thinking about getting a lighter one for the fall and winter months. Now for foundation, this one from Laura Mercier. It's the Weightless Perfecting foundation and I have it in the shade 4N2. Really do like this foundation and the shade. I think it matches me perfectly right now. Love the neutral shade of it. It's not too orangey, not too golden, and it's not too heavy on my skin, especially out in this Texas heat. Now when we went to Vegas, I did take this foundation with me and I didn't feel the heaviness with this foundation. It's very light on the skin, does give you medium coverage, and I've been playing around with it because in the beginning it was kind of breaking apart around the eight hour mark, but I think it's with the primer that I was using. When I use a moisturizing primer, it sits nicely on the skin. It does come with a pump, and I have to say that the amount that comes out in the pump, I have to pump out to, uh, twice for the amount to cover my face, which I think pretty much would come out to a pump with any other foundation, because it's just a little bit. That's all it gives you with just one pump. So I kind of need two. So I found another foundation that I love to wear. I have two brow pencils, one by Benefit, the Precisely My Brow. Now I've been using this one for years, but this shade is 4.5. I think the ones that I've been using was either 3.5 or 4. So I've been looking for a new one, a new shade. And I think I found it with this one 4.5 and the other one's by Hourglass. And this one is Dark Brunette. They both have a spoolie on one end and it has a thin tip on the other end. This is the one by Benefit and this is the one by Hourglass. And these are good brow pencils. They're not very waxy. They're not very pigmented. So it's good for me because I'm not very good with brows. You can build it up and they do last all day. I mean, it's brow pencils. Can't go wrong with any of these two. For mascara that I've been trying is this one from Guerlain, the Noir G mascara. And this is in the shade, I believe, brown or dark brown. It's what I'm wearing right now, of course. And I have to say it's not bad. It's more of a dark chocolate brown. And this is the first time I've tried a color mascara, not into the blues or the pinks mas mascara. I've been wearing black mascara pretty much all my life. So when I saw this one, I thought, let me just try a brown. It's not bad. It does kind of soften the eye look a little bit. And I do have this mascara in black. So the formula is very nice. It has kind of a curved wand and the shade's not bad. It's kind of like a dark chocolate brown, so it's not kind of a light brown. But with this eye look, I think it works. Now let's go back into Sydney Grace, and I have these two, the Luminous Light Face Palettes, and I have it in medium and in deep. There's also a light one, but it's gonna be too light for my skin tone. And what I used is the bronzer, the bronzer from the light palette, and I used the highlighter from the Deep Palette. Again, the formula is very nice. It is Sydney Gray's. Believe it or not, I haven't tried the blushes yet from these palettes because there are other brush blushes that I've been using, really do like, but eventually I will try the brushes, the blushes. But I have tried blushes from Sydney Grace before when it's just in the little singles. Let me tell you, those are pigmented. You just need one little and then apply it to your cheeks. Now let's go into blushes, and I do have quite a few, but let's start with these from RMS Beauty. The Reed Dimension Hydra Powder Blushes. Love these blushes. The one that I'm wearing right now is this one, Maiden's Blush. The formula is nice, the color is nice, blends into the skin, doesn't look powdery, it does have a little bit of a luminous finish. Love these blushes, and I did do a video with the four that I used. Let me go ahead and swatch them all for you so you can see. So this one's Sangria. I mean, look at that beautiful shade. I have to say Sangria is another one of my favorites. Then we have Mai Tai here, which is more of a peachy pink. And then this one, Hanky Panky. This is a beautiful shade, and I did try this one as an eyeshadow. Let me swatch that one for you. I mean, look at the pigmentation with these blushes. So as I was looking at Hanky Panky, I was wondering how it looked as, as an eyeshadow, and one of y'all did mention, how does it work as an eyeshadow? So I'll insert the look here that I used Hanky Panky as an eyeshadow, and I think it works beautiful. Now I have to say that these blushes 
beautiful. Look at the shades. Now another blush that I do like, this one's by House Labs and this is Lavender Blonde. This one comes in a pretty big size here. It does look kind of purple. And this one is, you know, purpley pink, but it's not as purple as Hanky Panky from RMS Beauty. And it doesn't look ashy on my cheeks when I try it. And I have to say, this has been the summer of blushes for me. So I really do like these blushes. Another one that I do like are these from Charlotte Tilbury, the blush, blush wands? No. Yes, the Matte Beauty blush wands. And I have in two shades, Peach Pop and Dream Pop. Also did a video on these and these are very nice. There's one thing that I do have a problem with that is that it does get a little messy because if you forget to kind of twist it, it will kind of leak everywhere because you do have to twist it open and then twist it close and then close it up. Make sure you hear that snap or not snap. Make sure you, you feel that click. So here's Dream Pop and Peach Pop. And look, I did wipe my hand from with all the concealers and this is the Fenty Beauty Eye Primer and it's still there. Look at that, that thing is still on. But anywho, here are the Charlotte Tilbury blushes. I have to say I like Dream Pop a little bit better, but Peach Pop is very nice for that, you know, light, summery kind of a look. All right, now let me show you the lipsticks. <laughs> I do have a lot of lipsticks that I've been trying for June and July. And let's start with these from Charlotte Tilbury, the Blur Liquid Lip. And it's what I'm wearing right now. I'm wearing Ruby Blur. Actually, I'm wearing two lipsticks. This one from Charlotte Tilbury and another red lipstick from BK Beauty. I do like the formula in these. Very moisturizing on the lips. It does stay on for quite a while. And there's two ways to wear it. You could wear it blur, like how I applied it on now. Just apply a little bit in the center and then use my finger to tap it out. And that kind of gives it a blurred effect. Or apply it all over your lips with the doe foot applicator. And that gives it more of an intense look. But personally, I kind of like the blurred look, the blurred effect to it. So the four shades I have, this one's Pillow Talk Medium, Honey Blur, Walk of No Shame Blur and Ruby Blur. And this is what I have on my lips. Next are these from BK Beauty. Beautiful formula. Very hydrating on the lips, great pigmentation, and great shades too. Let's see if I can swatch these off for you in one hand. So this one's Empower and Gratitude. Kind of do it two at a time so I can remember the names. <laughs> this one's Kindness and Passion. And then the last one is Confidence and it's what I'm wearing on top of the Charlotte Tilbury one. So here is confidence. Next are the lipsticks from Guerlain from their fall 2023 collection. And there are more in the brownie nudes and love the shades. Love the formula too from these from Guerlain. One bad thing about these is I wish that they would make the number of the shade a little bit bigger so I can see it. Because these are just so small, barely read it. This one's 539. I'm going to have to do it one at a time so I can read it, not gonna remember it. This is 539. But this one's the deepest one in this collection, which is 19. It's more of a satin finish. 539 is a matte finish. Another one in the satin finish is this one 15. Another one in the matte formula, this is 159. This one's 139. It's a little bit light, but with a good lip pencil it'll work. And then the last one is 819, which is that one next to my thumb. Love these shades from the fall collection. So happy that Guerlain came out with more brownie nudes instead of the reds and and pinks and purples. Now I do have a couple of lip oils from Clarins and these are not my favorite because I got the wrong kind. These are the Lip Shimmer. It is more of a shimmer finish, but it has that grittiness to it, which you kind of feel on your lips when you rub them together. So eventually I will get the popular lip oils whenever I find a sale. But these are the two that I have, 03 and 06. All right, finished the makeup. Now let's get into hair. The shampoo and conditioner from Guerlain, I kind of like these. At first, I didn't like the scent, but it kind of grew on you. I guess you get used to it because it does have that honey scent. But the more I use the shampoo and conditioner, the more I see volume with my hair and how my hair looks healthy. It does have the Guerlain, the, you know, the honey technology that they have. And I don't know if you can see how much I've used. This is the shampoo and the conditioners here. But do love that it comes with a pump too. But the more that I use the shampoo and conditioner, the more I see a difference in my hair. And I use it this morning and I think it looks healthy. It feels healthy. It looks shiny. I know I've still got lipstick on the back of my hand, so I'm <laughs> trying not to get my hair in there. But I do see a difference with my hair whenever I use the shampoo and conditioner. There is a mask with it. I prefer the, sh the conditioner instead of the mask. I don't know, I think this one just kind of weighs my hair down just a little. And it does have two different formulas. There's like a clear gel on the outside, on, 
and on the inside there's like a white cream. So you put it in the palm of your hand, you mix it together and apply it to your scalp and through your hair. Leave it for about five minutes and then rinse. My memory card ran out of space and I hope I didn't delete anything that I needed. <laughs> oh gosh, that'd be awful. But back to the shampoo and conditioner. I prefer the conditioner more than the mask. So when these are finished, I will be repurchasing these shampoo and conditioner from Guerlain. Do like what I'm seeing the more I use it. The scent, I'm kind of used to it now, but I do like the formula. Do like the formula. The other shampoo and conditioner that I do like are these from Colleen Rothschild. I did get one of their little, I guess, hair kits, and these are the ones that I've been using so far as a shampoo and conditioner. I think there's a mask in there too that I haven't used, so I can't give you information about that one. But these are nice and do like the scent. But if I had to choose between the two, I would get the one by Guerlain. That's just me and what my hair likes. But these are nice too, and the scent is just beautiful. A lot better than the Guerlain, I have to say. Now, there are a couple of lifestyle things that I'd like to let you know, and one of them is a bread maker. I've been watching this channel on YouTube, Sailing Zatara. It's this family that's been sailing around the world. It's so fun to watch, and I wish we could do something like that, but just living vicarious through them. But in the beginning of their sailing adventure was probably like five years ago. Been kind of binge watching them in the beginning of the year. I noticed that she was using a bread maker and we used to have a bread maker back in the 90s when it was popular and I don't know why we got rid of it but we're kind of wanting to get back into making our own bread. So when I saw that in one of her vlogs I kind of did some search and I went ahead and bought one. We've been using it now for several months and I have to say it's very nice. It makes very delicious bread. The one thing that I wish I could change is that we did get the big one, the two pound. I kind of wish now we got the one pound bread machine because I think that'd be perfect for the both of us. But you just put all the ingredients in the pan, set the timer if you want it to be ready in the morning, or push start if you want it to be ready in about three hours or four hours, depending on the type of flour you use. And then after a while, you smell the aroma of fresh baked bread. And when it's ready, oh my gosh, it tastes so good with some butter, it tastes good with eggs, it tastes good with the ham and cheese, and you know what's inside this bread. You know what you're eating. William Sonoma has this bread machine and they also have the smaller one. It is expensive, I know it is expensive, but it's bread that you know what the ingredients are. And you can make sourdough bread in this machine and I was quite surprised because you need to have like a sourdough starter and that could take like a week or 10 days. But there is a cycle to where you could make the starter. It just takes, I think, two hours and then you kind of see it fluff up like what sourdough starter looks like and then put the rest of the ingredients in there and then poof you have bread. Granted it doesn't have those air bubbles or the holes like regular sourdough bread has but this is a close second. So really do like this bread maker from oh I don't think I even said the name Zojirushi I believe that's how you pronounce it but they're very famous with their rice makers so now they have bread makers too. They have one that makes a two pound bread loaf or one that makes a pound loaf and I kind of wish we did get the pound loaf, but whatever we don't use, we just give it to the chickens. So really do like that bread maker, especially when you wake up and that smell of bread in the morning. Oh my goodness. I have one more thing here. I hope you're still with me. I know this is a long video, but I did buy this mirror from Amazon and it's a lighted vanity mirror and I hope that it gives me good light for you guys. So it's a light up mirror with dimmable three color LED lights. So I'm gonna use my phone to kind of videotape me. Okay, so here's what the mirror looks like. There's the camera that y'all are seeing me. But I wanted something that I can see that also has a lights. Now it does have three different types of lights, LED lights. So let me just push this little square here. So this is one of the lights here. I think this one's the cool light. Oh, let me just, I just turned it off. So this one's cool, this one's warm, and this one's neutral. And then it turns off. I know you're seeing a whole bunch of junk in front of me. Let me do it again through this camera. So this is off, this is cool, this is warm, and this is neutral. And then we're back off again. So I'm gonna put it back in the cool, that's what I had starting this video. But I want y'all to let me know which one you think was better, the cool, the warm, or the neutral. They're all kind of different, but I just want your opinion because y'all are seeing me. But let me do it again. So this one's cool, this one's warm, and this one's neutral. So yeah, let me know what you think, guys. But this has been one of my favorites because I do like the mirror and I do like the lights around it. Well, all right, you guys. I know this video is going to be long, so of course I'll always put timestamps down below so you can kind of zip right through it. But these have been my favorites for June and July. Got a couple that's not, but mostly these have been my favorites for these months and I'll be using these a lot. 
in the future. Well, all right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful. And if it was, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos like this. And you all have a wonderful, wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.